On this episode of the Sports Opinions Podcast, former professional football player and host of the After the Gridiron Podcast, Lyle Green joins the show as we talk about his podcast, After the Gridiron, the Dallas Cowboys, and the Los Angeles Lakers. And without any further ado, cue the intro. What's up, sports fans, and welcome to the Sports Opinions Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Alex Cuesta. And with me today, he is a retired pro football player, and he is the host of a really, really interesting podcast, one that I recommend for any sports fan out there in general. It's after the Gridiron Podcast. The host, Lyle Green, is with me. What's going on, Lyle? How you doing, Alex? Appreciate you having me on. Uh, yeah, looking forward to the, to the interview. Yeah, it's... It's going to be a really fun one. Like I said, your podcast is interesting. I have to do a quick aside here. Lyle, you got to excuse me. Right now, there's a thunderstorm going on outside my house. There is thunder. There's a lot of rain. My dogs might bark. My baby might cry. <laughs> Any of that occurs, let's just keep going and having some fun. And anyone listening, if you hear that, just enjoy the ambiance. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully the power doesn't go out because if it does, exactly. yeah, that would be tragic. Be yeah. useless. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we're going to jump right into it now that, that public service announcement's gone. Uh, like I said, you host the After the Gridiron podcast, which you approached me about coming on the show, which, you know, was pretty cool. It's, uh, I usually have to reach out to my guests. I'm still kind of growing, in essence, to try and really get out there. You reached out to me, which was awesome. Then I looked at your podcast a little more, listened to episodes. I now am a faithful listener. Nice, and- nice. It's just, I've been a lifetime football player, and it's just so cool to see. Before I really delve into it and steal your thunder, explain a little about what After the Gridiron is. Yeah, thanks for the, for the, for the plug and for, uh, for that uh, information. But yeah, it's a podcast with uh, me interviewing uh, retired football players, pro football players from the NFL and CFL, the Canadian Football League. Um, yeah, just something I thought would be a, a good idea to do as a former a player myself. I played in the CFL for, for 10 years, and I thought it'd be a, a good thing for not only the fans, but for former players as well. I think for them, a fan's perspective to kind of get insight into the lives of uh, the pro athletes, the guys they, they loved and admired to watch on TV and, and follow and to see what they're doing after football and after um, giving up the game. And from a player's perspective, uh, for guys to, a chance to, to share their stories and, and share you know, what they went through as a player and how they got to where they were and and uh, and some of the things they might be going through now after football. Some some are good, some are bad. So just an, an opportunity for guys to share their stories and for fans to get to hear their stories. And it's really cool that you're doing that um, because unless a player, whether or not they continue to go on and whether they coach and they're back in the light or they're on TV doing commentary, they kind of fade away. And you just, a lot of people forget that they are, they're people as well. And yeah. they, now that they're done with football, they have to go and try and figure out how to have regular lives outside of just playing the sport. Now, what really inspired you to do this? Did you have a kind of transition phase after you retired from the game? That was part of it. Yeah. Just, uh, that's, I also want to touch on that aspect of it as well. I just, I want to kind of get guys that weren't, uh, in the, uh, in the media and in coaching because kind of most people kind of know what they're doing already. So I kind of wanted to concentrate on guys that weren't, uh, doing those things, but I do have guys that, that do that as well. But, uh, but yeah, for me, yeah, it was a bit of a transition to, to get out of football, and it's it's tough for guys because um, you know, people you know, think it might be easy and think it's a, a smooth transition for for everybody, but it's uh, it's definitely not. So it's uh, it can be tough when you're doing something for so long and to have to to give it up and to try and kind of restart your life and transition to something else is not a it's not an easy thing to do. It's not a, an easy transition when you're doing something that you love for so long and have to do something else. So. Um, yeah, I thought it'd be a, a good uh, a chance for guys to to, sh- to share their their stories and their um, transition and how it went for them and um, some good like I said and some bad some tougher than others but uh, yeah just a chance for guys to to share what they went through after after leaving football and going into something totally different or and for most guys totally different than what they what they were doing playing football. 
Now you mentioned, you know, some guys have some better stories, not better in terms of um, more interesting or not, but some with easier paths than others giving up the game. Yes. Do you find that this sometimes is therapeutic for some of these guys where they maybe just get on a roll and tell you things that maybe they don't talk about very often? And, you know, we, a lot of times we do keep in touch after we have guests on podcasts and stuff. I find myself keeping in touch with a lot of my guests. Yeah. And do you find that they come back to you and are kind of like, man, I needed that. I needed to get that off my chest. And it's easy talking to somebody else who was in the brotherhood with me that understands the rigors of being a pro football player in that transition. Yeah. I wouldn't say uh, for, uh, totally that they've done that, but um, at, at the end of a lot of, interv- a lot of the interviews, the guys will be saying, yeah, this is great that you're doing what you're doing. I love it. Uh, keep it going. Um, give me encouraging words and, and uh, kind of push me on because they, they know it's something that a lot of guys want to do, be able to share their story and share what they're going through and share what, you know, what, what it's like you know, after football. So um, no one's kind of come back to me afterwards, but uh, not during, during and after the, the interview is over, they've definitely given me some, some encouraging words and, and some words of uh, encouragement saying, you know, that's a great, uh, it's a great uh, platform and a great uh, chance for guys to, to share their story. So in that aspect, they've been, uh, they've been uh, a, kind of pushing me on to to keep it going yeah it's always nice when you get those words of encouragement about what you're doing it definitely gives you because even though it's a passion obviously we're both podcasters so it's a passion if you're gonna continue to be dedicated and do this you have to be passionate about it but when you have your guests come on and say you know keep it going you're doing great it helps it's better than your wife or your mom going yeah honey you're awesome it's like yeah no all right thanks exactly (laughs) yeah we get it from a third party it's much better than yeah from someone who's uh, already in your corner (laughs) even though i love my wife and my mother (laughs) (laughs) don't want to get in trouble with them (laughs) exactly exactly (laughs) so i gotta mention some names that uh, i looked at your list of guys you had and i'm not gonna lie i don't know a lot of them and it was it's cool to hear their stories but there are some guys that even the casual fan or someone that's dedicated to a certain team will know these names. Yeah. Guys like Robert Mathis, Larry Johnson, who was the most dominant running back in the NFL for a solid three, four years. And yeah. even Thomas Jones. I'm a Jets fan. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you had those three names are huge. What was, what was it like talking to guys of their, you know, they got to the pinnacle. They were some of the most successful players in NFL history. Yeah. What was it like talking to them about and their transitions? That's pretty cool. Just uh, like you said, the guys are kind of kind of name guys that uh, you always love to watch and were dominant at certain aspects of their careers. Um, to be able to talk with them and to kind of get some insight into their mentality and their their thinking and their and their lives and their transition was uh, was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, they, they each have a uh, unique stories and and different. Uh, different um, paths after after leaving the game but uh yeah it was great to be able to, to talk to them and to kind of get uh, behind the scenes uh, behind the screen so to speak of uh, their lives and what the, what they went through putting you on the spot a little any okay. past guests that you have um stick out in your head any story of any certain guest that you can think of right now that really sticks out in your head that kind of for you as well as you're listening to them tell it just stays with you in every time you go to do this reminds you of this is why you do it type of deal uh well i'd say a, a couple are probably like that because guys that kind of went through some tough times like uh anthony trucks he's a, a linebacker that played in the nfl for a little bit and um uh, he's a, a foster kid and had a kind of a tough upbringing and and went through some things uh, personal in his personal life uh, after after leaving and got in some trouble not trouble but uh, difficult uh, difficult times for him and he's kind of turned his life around and one recent one that uh, I just did uh, not too long ago was uh, Marcus Ogden um, you know his story and what he went through and going from the highs of you know having an eight figure business to you know, going into bankruptcy and 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 then climbing out of that so those two were were, were good ones that. Um, and that kind of stuck with me, stuck with me about uh, you know how guys can can turn things around after going through some some tough times because some guys go through the the tough times after leaving leaving the game so to to have their stories and to share guys like that who were able to to get out of that is is a is a you know, a heartwarming thing and something that uh, that I love to to be able to share on on the podcast. You know, it's a terrible and tough reminder to us um, NARPs. I'm stealing that from Boomer and Geo NARPs and non-athletic regular people. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a, it's a good one. I love that. Yeah. Um, 
stealing that, like, you know, I, I, my pinnacle was I ran track at Marist College. I ran Division One track, and that was the end of it. Okay. It is, yeah. you know, it is kind of eye-opening to realize the hardships of some of these people that, as fans, we looked at as Supermans. You know, anyone that gets to professional sports level to a bunch of us NARPs is really, you know, someone we all look up to. And then to hear their stories of, their falls from grace and then they're able to pick themselves back up again. Everyone likes a great story like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it's, you know, it's cool to hear from our end, just, you know, the human aspect of these people who reached exactly what we aspired to do since we were little kids, high school, even college. And now it's just, it's really cool. The stories that you are able to allow people to tell. Yeah, it's awesome. There's so many, so many great stories and, and so many, like you said, great turnarounds and, and the guys that are doing some, some really cool things. And, and um, yeah, one of the stories that I loved was uh, um, Randy Chevre. He played uh, mostly in the CFL, but he spent some time with the, with the Dallas Cowboys and he shared how, you know, the way he made the team was he had a, uh, he was a snapper for the, uh, in the NFL and he, he made the team by having a snap off basically in the locker room. <laughs> right before team pictures pretty much. <laughs> so you know when you hear stories like that it's, just, it's pretty cool to 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 hear those things and, and to be able to share those with, with with the fans yeah those are the types of things that you know it's just you know they're funny to hear and then when you realize that this guy was doing something that he knows he's good at but he probably thought that was for my career if i don't yeah. win this this could end my career so exactly. it, while we're sitting here kind of chuckling at it that was his life at that point <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the pressure to be able to, to have to perform and that's that's kind of the mentality that athletes have to have because you know we, we face those type of pressures and those type of situations where you you're you're put up to it's kind of put up or shut up you gotta you gotta perform and and and, and do what you have to do in, in high pressure situations so that's kind of the, the life of an athlete but uh, to hear it and laid out like that is uh, is pretty cool though <laughs> so do you have any teasers of any future guests that are coming on that we should be looking out for? Uh, well, I usually don't uh, give out the featured guests. I usually save those for the insiders. So people that sign up to my, my email list, I give uh, um, updates on who's coming up uh, down the road. But um, yeah, if, if people want information on who's coming up uh, down the road, you can just sign up on my website and, and, uh, and become a, an insider after the good on insider. And then you can get all that information there. There you go. I like it. I like that a lot. So before we continue to go on, I have to ask you because this kind of, you know, it works with this. XFL just released their logos today for their oh, really? team names. Yeah, it all got released today. There are eight teams. They have all the team names, um, their logos. They're pretty cool. Um, it, what are your feelings right now about the XFL? We just experienced the AAF. Yeah, and the AAF had promise on the field. The offensive line play was the worst part of it, but the quarterbacks weren't bad, and that's usually what you need to be a decent league is to have good quarterback play. Yeah, and I really thought that if they had the chance, the offensive lines could have come around. They're the toughest; they have to play as a unit, and if you don't give them a long time, it takes some time to gel for sure. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts about the XFL? Can can a league like this? be successful you came from the cfl which you know is kind of a league where a lot of guys are still trying to take that step to get the nfl and the cfl is a very successful league up in canada oh yeah cfl has been out been around for for years and years and years so um as far as the xfl it's i'm kind of taking a wait and see approach i mean like you said this the aaf uh didn't do so well um i'm kind of surprised uh that it didn't but um yeah because i think there's definitely a market for the for the kind of a spring league where uh, no teams playing like in the April to April to June type uh, time of the year, so I was kind of surprised that they that they didn't last. But um, yeah, I'm hopeful that the XFL can can stick around and 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 do better than they did last time around. Um, anytime you can have more football is is a good thing. So um, CFL is a you know, a great league and a, and a great game. So the more the more leagues there are, the more opportunities for for guys to. Um, to be employed playing football is a, I think is a good thing. So hopefully they can stick around and, and do well in the, in the upcoming season. The more football, the better. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. We're going to jump into some NFL talk. You are a Cowboys fan. 
my wife would like you a lot because my wife is a Cowboys fan. Oh, smart lady. <laughs> yes. Yes. One of the main reasons I married her is because she is significantly smarter than I am. <laughs> but the, you know, Big D would not be Big D without turmoil and <laughs> some exactly. issues yeah. going on. There's always something. Uh, what are your feelings? Because you kind of you have a different perspective because you were a player, obviously. So you went through the contracts. You did all that stuff. Yeah. How do you feel about the three biggest players on the team, Zeke, Dak, and Cooper, all wanting contract extensions? Zeke sitting out, and now all three of them just watch Jalen Smith get a huge extension. Get paid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you feel about what's going on with those three? It's it's tough. It's a tough situation where you have your your big three all kind of wanting contracts at the same time. That's kind of uh, yeah a tough situation for the for the Cowboys to to go through. So um, I was personally I was surprised that Zeke uh, sat out because I don't think he, he has very much leverage with two years left on his contract. So for him to to sit out, I'm not sure if that that's the the greatest thing. To do, but I, I definitely can understand why he's doing. It. He's the best running back in the league, and he's not getting paid like the best running back in the league. So um, I can see him wanting to to get his money and to you know try and force the hands of the Cowboys. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I I think I think they'll all get uh, their contracts. I think they'll all get their money. I think it'll it'll get settled um, um, before the season uh, starts. Um, but uh, yeah, kind of have to wait and see what what happens. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tough situation. It's a tough situation. Like I said, having your big three all needing contracts at the same time, and they're all deserving of money. That's the thing too, because they all deserve to get to, to get paid. Now, are there any veterans in the locker room? I know a lot of guys get it. A lot of guys get that it's a business. But if you're sitting in that Cowboys locker room and you see the talent around you guys and you see Zeke not there, but Dax there, Cooper's there, and just all the great players, that this team could really be in the hunt late in the season. Are there any veterans in that locker room that just kind of grab these guys by the collar and go, man, you're going to make a lot of money in your career. You don't need this right now. Like you need the money, but look at, you know, part of me want this curious if they say, look at guys like Duncan, like Brady, like these guys that Dirk that get a lot of money, but don't always take the big chunk because they know that the money also needs to be spent elsewhere to make a great team. Is that ever something that happens? Do you guys ever get sat down by veterans to talk about this stuff? Or does every man worry about their own? Yeah, I don't think it's something that guys will will really talk about uh, too much. I don't think any veterans will be you know, talking to them about uh, you know how to how to negotiate and how to you know, get what they want to get because it's – it's you no, know, it's a not for long. It's the NFL logo, I should say, is not for long. Yeah. So you no, know, for guys to <laughs> for guys to you no know, want to to get paid when they can is is something that uh, you can't really fault them for. So you know you don't really get to, in the way of guys and their and their and their money kind of kind of thing. So um, yeah, I don't think this. I don't think any of the veterans will be you no know, talk talking to them and telling them to you no know, you no know, take less for the team because that's something that each individual has to decide for themselves if. If that's something they want to do but uh yeah it's uh like i said like it's a, it's a tough situation and a tough uh tough time but uh i think it's going to get settled out and i think they'll all they all know the big picture and that th- this is a big year for them and they have a really good chance this year so i think in the end it'll all get settled so a funny thing to come out of dallas cowboys camp one jason witten's return i think is great because he's just a big tackle that can catch which is cool exactly. that, was, yeah, that was unbelievable that he came back he came back and you know the commentary thing was not going the way he wanted to but i did not know that jason witten was a troll and what i mean is did you hear with all antonio brown and his helmet nonsense that's going on right now yeah jason witten has been coming out frequently going my helmet feels awesome Oh, really? I love this new helmet. Yeah, he's been quoted like two or three times just talking about how much he loves his new helmet. <laughs> <laughs> now, I would never suspect Jason Witten, who's like the consummate pro, to yeah. be a troll. And you know he's taking jabs at AB. Like, you don't oh, yeah. see that after the one of the biggest receivers and players in the league has been making a big stink about it. Yeah. How do you – Would does that endear – to a lot of the players in there when one of your leaders is kind of having some fun like that when he's a guy who's typically not that way in public? Yeah, I don't think that's something that the guys will be worrying about too much. I think they're just uh, probably laughing along with them about uh, about the whole situation. But yeah, this, Jason's probably just, uh, you know, just uh, throwing throwing some shade at, uh, at AB because it's, it's something that you got you to adjust to because, you know, stuff that happens 
if equipment changes and stuff like that, it's, I know he, he's used to his, uh, his equipment and used to having the things um, the same way, but uh, when rules change and, and things change, you have to adjust just like in a game, if something happens, you have to make an adjustment. So I think he's just uh, kind of uh, having, having some fun at the AB's expense, but uh, you no know, kind of saying that it's not something that he should be making it such a big deal of. He shouldn't. And, and, you know, we need to acknowledge the elephant in the room. When you're playing Pop Warner and you're playing in high school and you're a skill player, a receiver or whatever, you have to wear all your pads. NFL yeah, yeah. players do not wear their thigh pads and knee pads or hip pads. Their receivers don't wear any of them. You could see it. Like, or they wear like little nubs that they cut out, like little circles so that they're quote unquote there. Exactly. For them to be complaining about any equipment is ridiculous. They get away with murder with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, I I kind of get it that he's he likes his because guys are are kind of uh, creatures of habit. So having the same thing for, you know, I used to wear the same shoes for so many years, even though they're they're kind of getting older and kind of worn. <laughs> but I was used to them because they're comfortable. So I kind of I, I can understand to some to some extent uh, him wanting to keep his helmet. But uh, yeah, if it's too old and you, and the upgrades and the the technology that exists today, he's gotta he's gotta be able to adjust and, and make an adjustment to the helmet yeah i think he's wearing like a shut air i think i wore a shut air in pop warner in high school yeah, exactly. that is an old helmet it's an old old helmet yeah it's a really yeah. old helmet that thing used to wiggle on me when it was like you know every time i sweat it just started to wiggle like that was not the safest helmet exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so back to the cowboys if you know dak and cooper are gonna be there i don't think any of them are gonna sit out into the season I hope Zeke doesn't, but if Zeke is not there week one, if this goes into Le'Veon Bell territory, what are their chances at contending now without Zeke? I know uh, Jerry's been speaking highly of Pollard, the rookie six rounder that they have, and he's been looking good in preseason, but preseason's preseason. Yeah. Once the speed gets amped up in the regular season, it's completely different. Those holes close quickly. Yes. What are their chances to contend without Zeke? Uh, not, not very good. I don't think, uh, <laughs> like, like you said, Pollard's doing, doing well with filling in for him, but, uh, um, for, for long-term basis for, uh, for a Super Bowl championship basis, I don't think he's, he's going to be enough for them to, to get over the hump. It's, it's something that they, they definitely need Zeke in there. So, um, yeah, hopefully they, I, hopefully they get settled before the season. I think, I think they will. If not, they might make him wait a few games cause they kind of have a easier schedule at the beginning of the season so they might wait make him wait a little bit but uh i think it'll get done eventually because he's like i said he's got two years left on his deal so um they've they've they'll they'll sell it out and, and get it done and get get him in camp because this is a this is a big year for them and a really good chance for them to to do well this year it is now i got to get your feelings on this how do you feel about dak uh, potentially it was out there that he denied 30 mil a year because he wants 40 how do you feel about like I, to me? If there's sometimes you got to look in the mirror, and yeah. I'm sorry, Dak, you're not worth forty. You're a very good player. I think thirty is overpaying for Dak Prescott. I yeah, don't. I think it's crazy. I think forty millions, yeah, it is crazy. I think, but that's he's just negotiating. I mean, he's just doing his his agents is doing his job and trying to get the most for his client. But uh, yeah, there's no way he's going to get forty million. <laughs> <laughs> no. As much as I love Dak, I know he's a he's a great quarterback, but he's he's not forty million dollars worth for sure. No shot there. No, so, no. are you putting your Cowboys? If all things considered, Zeke comes back, they play. Are you putting your Cowboys in the championship next year, or who do you have winning it all? I am. I am. I'm. I'm high on the Cowboys this year. I think they have a really, really good chance of of doing well. Like, uh, yeah, with the big three, and uh, we got the, the young guys on defense now. I think they really have a good chance to to go all the way and and uh, and you know, make some noise in the Super Bowl this year. Uh, for the yeah, in the Super Bowl, um, yeah, I think they have a really good chance. Uh, in the AFC, obviously the Patriots are always good, but uh, I kind of think they might take a step back this year. But uh, yeah, who they play, and I, I think Chargers would be good, but uh, they they don't have Gordon right now, so I'm not sure about that situation. But uh, if if he's in there, I think they have a good chance. <laughs> yeah. I would love to see Philip Rivers just play in the Super Bowl. That man deserves it. That too, yeah. I'd love to see him get a chance in the Super Bowl for sure. Yeah. But unfortunately, I have the Bears winning it all. I think that defense that defense is just going to be so – that defense was great last year. Yeah, well, what about their offense, though? What do they have? Do they have enough I, on offense? I think they have enough on offense. You know, I think Mitch Trubitsky is that type of quarterback. He's not your Brady. He's not your Peyton Manning. 
but he is your good enough. He's your Eli Manning. He is your Trent Dilfer where he's never going to be great, but he's not going to make the big mistake. He's good enough to win it. That I see them winning off a of defense completely. I see, you know, a Tampa Bay situation, a Baltimore Ravens situation with them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if their defense is is, is at that level yet. I think they're, they're definitely really good, but yeah, to be at that level where they can just carry the offense, I don't know if they're if they're that good yet. Well, for my prediction, Lyle, I'm hoping you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should, we'll see soon. We'll see. We'll find out soon. Soon enough. <laughs> We're going to jump into a different area. We're going to go completely away from football for a little bit. Talk about some basketball. So you're okay. a Raptors fan. You're a Raptors fan. You have your you know, Canadian allegiance now. I yeah. didn't mention this before. You are Canadian for all the fans and people listening out there. So if, before people turn their head and go, oh, he's bandwagoning in with the Raptors. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I guarantee the Lakers are probably more of like the bandwagon pick. Than the Raptors. <laughs> Actually, I grew up a Lakers fan. And then once the Raptors came into existence, then I kind of kind of became a, a Raptors as well. They that makes sense. Joined. Yeah, yeah. So before they just won it, how sad were you that they were kind of like the farm team of great players that like so many great players so came sad. up through that organization know, and left it's yeah it was so sad it's just tragic for the city and for the for the team to lose all those guys the Vince Carters and McGrady's everybody just want not, no one wanted to play there so and the so um yeah to finally have a a guy that uh you know that took them over the hump and and to finally win the championship was a was great for the for the city for the for the whole country actually because yeah if you had you know, Raptor, Raptor mania was, was going rampant across the country. It, yeah, that's really cool. And, you know, I feel like what might be worse for the Raptors fan is that all the players, the great players, the Bosch and all them that left, never said anything bad about the organization, never said anything bad about the fans. They were just like, we just didn't want to play in Toronto anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, at least be like, yo, the organization is awful. They don't do anything right. Like, they wouldn't even say that. <laughs> I guess but, that's a good sign that the, the organization was, wasn't the problem. It is, but I guess like, you know, Bears fans, not Bears, Browns fans for the longest time could point to the fact that they were just inept. Yeah. And that's why people don't want to go. That was like kind of their crutch. Like, it's not our fault. Our front office sucks, you know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but um, on to the Lakers. They have a real shot bringing in Anthony Davis, bringing in LeBron James. And they thought having Boogie Cousins was going to complete that big three. He goes down with the ACL tear, which is absolutely tragic. Yeah, yeah. There I are rumors. Him, yeah. There are rumors of Dwight Howard, Joakim Noah, and Maury Spates all getting workouts. Out of the three, Dwight interests me because this would be his second stint with the yeah, Lakers. Yeah. How would he fit? Would he actually fit with those two guys? Uh, he, he, he might be able to. I think that'd be a, a decent sign for them and to add some depth as well to kind of uh, replace the boogie into kind of filling some minutes with him so i don't think that would be uh, too bad to have him there and kind of that deep more mostly defensive presence to kind of be a, a rim a rim protector for the for them on the defensive end so i, I think that'd be a, a decent sign now do you like what they did in going out and getting ad the way they did just kind of selling the youth movement to bring in one great young player are you okay with getting rid of all of their young talent essentially to be honest, I think they gave up too much. I think they gave up way too many guys for, for AD, but I guess you know, they, they got to the point where they had to get it done. So whatever it took, they had to, they had to do it. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sad that they gave up so many guys because there's some, some really good talented players that they, they gave up for him. So um, they, they, they better win. <laughs> These the next three years, they better, they better bring a championship uh, to make it worth it. So I got to say, I, I got to say to all my Lakers friends out there, I argued and I debated with everyone that Kyle Kuzma was the better rookie between him and Lonzo, that he was the more talented, the better NBA prospect, and I got ripped left and right for that. This trade just verifies what I have to say where the Lakers would say anyone but Kuzma. That's all I have to say on that. They value Kuzma more than Lonzo Ball. Do you think they were correct in the anybody but Kuzma kind of um, stipulation? Uh, not, not exactly. I, I think between Kuzma and Ingram, I definitely think Kuzma was, was the better, was a better prospect than the guy to keep in him. And Lonzo, I think is, I think it's pretty close. I'm, I kind of like Lonzo. I think he's going to be a, a really good player. And I kind of, I've really hurt that, that they lost him, but, uh, Kuzma is definitely a, a really good talent and, and, uh, yeah, I'm definitely glad that they, they kept him because, yeah, he's really good. 
see what I see with Lonzo, I see a guy who is a starter for his career. He is a career starter. He's going to play well. I see his ceiling just being like somewhere between Rondo and Rubio, maybe getting up to being a little bit better than Rondo. That's my ceiling for him. So it's a really good player, but not someone that you're going to build around. He's the fourth member of a big three in essence. Do you get that same feeling or you, am I completely wrong? Is he superstar level? No, I, th- I think he has a little more. I think he has a super, superstar level in him. The way he plays, his, his, uh, his basketball IQ is really high. So I think guys like that are, are uh, kind of a special players and, and are, you know, have special skills and special uh, abilities. So I think he can be uh, kind of a, a great Peyton type level player. I think he's a really good defender and he can develop his offensive game definitely work on his jump shot and once he gets that going i think he's gonna be a really really good player a perennial all-star do you buy the jason kidd comparison where jay kidd came in very similar a floor general great defender um but just couldn't shoot for his life and then ended up becoming one of the better three-point shooters and you know in terms of numbers wise in the game i do i think that's a that's a really good comparison i think uh yeah very similar um starts to their careers uh and very similar type games very smart basketball guys have uh, high basketball iqs and yeah i think that's a, a pretty good comparison so the clock is officially ticking with lebron in la because he's already said that he wants to at least play a season with his son if his son makes his way into the nba which all things look like Bronny jr is on his way to the nba yeah If it ends up not being the Lakers, there's a good chance that LeBron will do LeBron fashion and force his way to wherever the hell that his son goes. Yeah. Do you think that the Lakers are going to be able to acquire a championship before he either retires as a Laker or leaves to go and play with the son? I think so. I think they have, uh, they'll have enough to, to get it done. I think with the two dominant players that they have, um, there's, there'll be enough around them to, to make it to, to the championship and, and get it done. In the next next three years, at least, at least that's what I hope, I'm hoping. But I, I definitely think they can. I think they have enough to do it. So you were part of the group that's buying that LeBron has a quote unquote lost the step because I still think that he's the best player on the planet, bar none. That he's still on his own. Uh, you know, I've gotten a lot of arguments saying that no guys are now closer. He's lost the step. He's probably not the best anymore. I still think LeBron LeBron James is the best player on the planet. How are your feelings on that? I agree. I think he's he's still still the best player in the league until until proven otherwise. I think last year he's just uh, he just got hurt. That's uh, that was the only thing that uh, that held him back. But uh, I think people are looking at his his play after he came back from the groin. But I don't think he was one hundred percent healthy, so that kind of hindered him and limited his his play and his, and his abilities. So I think now that he's had an off season for the first time in forever that he, his body has got a chance to, to heal up and, and to recover. And I think he's going to come back uh, um, as, as good as ever. Could you imagine if LeBron James didn't play basketball and decided to be a, a tight end and play football? <laughs> yeah, I know you see, you see all the, I think there's a, a video of him and, uh, and uh, what's his name playing, playing some flag football on out there. Cause yeah, he would have been a, a great tight end, a great play. And he's a Cowboys fan. So I, Def Dallas definitely needs someone after after Witten or to go alongside Witten. So yeah, if if he's if he's open to it, I'm sure they'd be happy to have him. Yeah, I think he can go actually play right after his career, yeah. and he will be you know an, an, an all, all pro right away because he's just oh, yeah. a freak. He'd be like an Antonio Gates, he'd be like the Antonio Gates type player. So are we officially starting that lobby for LeBron when you're done and you retire at the age of probably closer to forty? Just go play a few years in the NFL. Get exactly. a pro bowl and all pro, try and win a chip, and then, you know, right off into the sunset. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so with that, that concludes this episode of the Sports Opinions Podcast. My guest, Lyle Green, a retired pro football player, and he is the host of After the Gridiron Podcast. Lyle, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, Al. It's been a pleasure. A lot of fun today. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to, uh, to hearing this and hearing uh, more of your podcasts out there. Thank you very much. Now, Lyle, um, obviously, after the gridiron, where can people find that? Anywhere a podcast can be found, basically? Yep, we're on all the different the areas they can find podcasts on iTunes and Google Play, Stitcher, all the, all the podcast uh, players uh, we're on there. And you can also listen on my website at www.atgridiron.com. And you can find me on uh, social media as well, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with the uh, uh, at AT Gridiron. And you can find us uh, there and you know, follow us there and uh, see what we're doing. And tune into some episodes. 
Yeah, absolutely. Go listen to a bunch of them and don't miss any of the new ones. They're guaranteed to be great. And again, I'm Alex Cuesta, host of the Sports Opinions Podcast. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at a underscore Cuesta30. Find Sports Opinions on Twitter at Sports Opinion 30. Instagram, Sports Opinions 30. Visit the Facebook page and you can find this podcast and all the others I've recorded anywhere you can find a podcast. So no excuse not to listen. And when you do listen, if you like it, make sure you give it a good rating, a good review. Best way to get out the word so my fantastic guests like Lyle will have a chance to have their voices heard to the millions and millions of potential listeners. And be on the lookout for more new things. Sports Opinions is expanding. There's going to be a lot more in the works coming up in the future. So be on the lookout for that. So again, everybody, I'm Alex Cuesta. This was Sports Opinions Podcast. Have a good one out there, everybody. Everybody.